Kotodamaso, which very roughly translates to Manner where words have the power to alter reality, is a fascinating show that aired from October 9th, 2021 to December 18th of the same year. I say fascinating because the main episodes of the drama aired on TV Asahi, but the show came with bonus episodes, about half the length, that were only available on Abema, a video on demand service. So in essence, if you wanted to watch the whole show, you had to do so in two entirely different places. The show was a joint project between the two companies, with TV Asahi airing the 10 episodes of the main show in their Saturday night drama slot, while Abema On Demand also aired the main series online, alongside six different .5 episodes that explored events from the main story that weren't fully covered there. But I'll get into that more later. So what exactly is Kotodamaso? As the show's title suggests, it's about a building where words literally have the power to alter reality. This is the driving force behind the show and where all the horror comes from. The residents of the show, all women, live in the Ladies' Court Hattori, a building that, as we later find out, has a rather shady history. And that shady history has brought about a rather fascinating curse. You see, once a certain, very simple ritual is carried out, the spirit haunting the building starts putting people's words into action. Literally. This is delivered straight in the first episode, when the resident of Room 1, a songwriter, wishes that a famous singer on TV, her former boyfriend, and a man who spurned her badly, wishes that he would disappear as he sings the song she wrote. And he does. He has a heart attack live on TV and dies. But immediately after that, the songwriter starts hearing voices that only she can hear. She starts seeing things that only she can see. It would appear that a ghost is haunting her and causing all sorts of, well, unfavorable occurrences to happen around her. The songwriter's friend, the main character of the show who has just moved into the building and works as a viewtuber, visits a spirit medium on her friend's behalf. This woman, a powerful shrine maiden, sends her nephew, a man who doesn't appear to actually have any powers and makes a living swindling people of their hard-earned cash by selling them fake charms, to carry out a cleansing ceremony on her behalf. She's a busy woman with better things to do after all. But things don't exactly go to plan, as you might expect. And, spoilers, the songwriter dies. Whoops. From here, the show introduces us episode by episode to each of the ladies' court residents, with each lady getting her own episode and haunting as something she says comes true, causing her to end up caught in the curse as well. I felt this was a smart way for the show to go about it because there are a lot of characters in this show and it's a bit much to take in all at once. So the show doesn't bother. You get introduced to the characters as needed but it's not like they disappear after that either. Every single woman living in the building is involved in the curse, and their stories eventually intertwine and lock them all together as it reaches a rather fascinating crescendo. Now, I originally found this show because I'm a big fan of Nakamura Yurika, a woman whose face is too good looking for my own good, who plays one of the main characters here. I wasn't really sure what to expect of it, but at the very least, the premise sounded interesting. Words that change reality. It's a neat idea. But, well, Japanese dramas tend to have more misses than hits for me. Having said that, I went in with low expectations and found myself enjoying it a lot more than I thought. But this also presents, for me, one of the main problems with the show. As I mentioned earlier, it aired in two different places. The main show aired on TV Asahi, but if you had an Abema membership, then you could also watch it there, alongside the supplementary episodes. But well, the supplementary episodes were actually the best part of the show. There were six of these, one for almost each of the ladies living in the building. 
These episodes explored the hauntings these ladies faced after the curse went after them, and featured stuff that was glossed over in the main episodes. They're short, only around 15 minutes each, but because their focus was entirely on presenting a terrifying moment from each lady's life, well, you can probably see where this is going. These bonus episodes weren't meant to tell a story so much as provide a few really neat scares, and that's exactly what they did. The main show absolutely is horror, and it had a few moments that genuinely got even jaded old me, but all the fluff was cut for the bonus episodes and you just get 15 minutes of build up and creepiness before the final big scare or reveal. These episodes were great. It was stuff that would have added so much more creepiness and horror to the main show. But then again, if these scenes had appeared there, then the main show would have dragged. So it's understandable, but a little sad that you essentially have to go to the extras to get the good stuff, and you don't actually get the full story if you only watch the main episodes. You need the bonus ones to really put it all together. Anyway, the heart of this show is built around two things, the curse and the characters that get caught up in it. Each lady is a stereotype of something in particular. We have the songwriter from Room 1, a politician's secretary in Room 2, a free announcer in Room 3, a doctor in Room 4, an elementary school teacher in Room 5, an editor in Room 6, and the main character of the show, a VTuber with the largest collection of overalls I've ever seen in my life, in Room 7. We also briefly get a university student show up to live in Room 1 after the songwriter dies, but, well, that room is pretty darn cursed. Now, as I said, each of these ladies has a full episode dedicated to her, and most of them get a bonus episode as well. You get to know them pretty well, and I think this was handled by the show rather well. Whether you'll actually connect with any of them is a different story, because they are rather shallow once you scratch the surface. But I found this didn't bother me too much, because the actresses portraying them were all fantastic, and the story was enough to keep me involved anyway. I also have a newfound love for the actress who played the elementary school teacher in particular, because I don't think I've ever in my life seen a more unintentional portrayal of someone so utterly, skin-crawlingly creepy in my life. It was amazing. Saying too much might spoil it, but her bonus episode sent that character from kind of there, I guess, to holy shit. I didn't know a good looking young woman could make my skin crawl so much and I don't even think that's how she's supposed to be coming across. That actress is now known as Creepy Teacher in this household and I don't think that Monica will ever change. I've actually seen her in quite a few things since and every time I see her I'm just reminded of her bonus episode and it's fantastic. So we have all these ladies dealing with the Kotodama curse. They say stuff generally some wish they want to come true, and it does, but not without a price. Obviously the songwriter dies in the first episode and I thought that would be the gimmick throughout the entire show, with the ladies dying one by one, but apparently not. There are surprisingly few deaths, but several of the ladies do get messed up quite a bit, and the twisted relationships they have with each other also tends to make matters worse. The doctor, for instance, tries to steal organs from the secretary once she's out of commission so she can save her estranged husband, who is now dating the creepy elementary school teacher in the room next door, etc etc. It's a tangled mess the whole way around, and you'll need to watch the entire show to understand just how all these very troubled women relate to each other. It makes it sound rather soap opera-y, but it's actually not. These twisted relationships and damaged women are the core of the show and, in the end, it all comes back to that curse. It's not until the very end of the show that it finally delves into what the curse is and how it came about. And without getting too spoilery, well, it also involves women, and let's just say an illicit relationship in a time when such things were terribly frowned upon. 
Yeah, it got suddenly gay at the end, which I really wasn't expecting, and the show actually handled it pretty well. While all of this is going on, we also have that shrine maiden from the first episode trying to figure things out and occasionally showing up to exercise this ghost that's messing everyone up. For some reason, the show is split into two parts, with the first part consisting of the first five episodes, and the Shrine Maiden's failed attempt at exorcism. The second part then looks deeper into what the curse actually is, the history behind it, and allows the characters to come into their own and fight the curse head on. At this point I should probably mention the main ghost of the show, who I've so far avoided bringing up. The spirit behind the curse had a really neat design that I loved, and for the first half of the show you only get to see her in very tiny glimpses with a bag over her head. I'm not sure if the characters actually gave her a name, but we just referred to her as Baghead. Who this woman is remains one of the biggest mysteries throughout the show, and there are numerous misdirects to keep you guessing along the way. But ultimately, it's not a surprise either. It's the least surprising ghost reveal I've seen in a while, but that doesn't take away from how cool the character was and how tragic her story was as well. If you don't feel bad for her, then I can only assume you have no feelings left. Her design is, of course, tied to her tragic death, which is then tied to the curse that comes about from her righteous anger. And the very simple ritual that unlocks her curse was also taken from something incredibly important and dear to her during life. I hope all that is vague enough to make you want to watch it, because it really is a great little show, and uncovering the mystery for yourself is half the fun. But it all ties together in the end in a satisfying way, and I appreciated that. Is it the best show you'll ever see in your life? Absolutely not. Is it worth a watch? Absolutely yes. Genuine horror shows from Japan are actually quite rare, and on top of that, finding a good one is even harder. This one is definitely worth your time, if you can find it. Lots of pretty ladies and a deadly, terrifying curse. And ghost. How can you go wrong? But what did you guys think of this one? Have you seen Kotodama Soul? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.